welcome back to my channel today it's gonna be a video all about MS-DOS I have used this dust machine this green build that I made for about six months ago and today I'm gonna build the next one maybe the final one my ultimate MS-DOS machine that's gonna be in a desktop cabinet desktop case and I hope you will join me on this build and I hope you will enjoy this video because I know I'm gonna love making this now maybe you're thinking you have got this MS-DOS machine I just saw it boot up it runs fine nice graphics nice music everything is all right why not just use this one now I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna go in details we're gonna dissect everything this is gonna be a long long video and I'm gonna explain all the knowledge that I have got for about six months now because I've been six or eight months ago I start my MS DOS love just exploded it just felt like it was 1994 again so join me on this one guys I I hope it's gonna be a good one <laughs> before we look at my next build I just want to show you guys this one first now this is really this has been my main workhorse when I wanted to play MS DOS games it has given me so many hours of pure joy nostalgia enjoyment memories showing to my friends uh, I don't know inspiring my friends to do something like this uh, maybe six eight ten friends were just amazed by this but I mean they have families they didn't have the time to build something like this not the room or nothing like that so I actually helped them by using DOSBox and emulating MS-DOS games I mean it's not the same but they're enjoying their games and it's it's all right but you guys you know me I really enjoy the original hardware I, I don't want to call myself purist because I like to use you know compact flash solutions and all that I mean I like the hard disk reading sound but they're not that reliable today and the spinning sound I don't like it <laughs> it must be must be honest about that but my first DOS machine was I think it was about summer of 1994 I think because on my Amiga 600, I bought Alien Breed 2 or something like that. And I remember when it loaded, you could, you could choose between two human players and two dinosaurs. I don't know which version it is on the Amiga, I remember. But at the bottom of the screen, it said 1994. And that summer, I bought my first 486 DX4. 100 megahertz i could choose between a four speed cd-rom drive and four megabytes of ram or only this drive and eight megabytes of ram and the sellers told me dude this is a hundred megahertz pc we won't get i mean we won't get cpus that are faster than that from now on everything will be run by the cd-rom drive and from now on we will just get faster and faster CD-ROM drives so 100 megahertz is just the top we're not gonna get anything faster so <laughs> so I bought this one my my computer with 4 speed CD-ROM drive and 4 megs of RAM I could run Doom but I had to you know adjust in objects like bad and config use and all that but it was possible with 4, me 4 megabytes of RAM but 8 megabytes just made everything much much more easier and, on to, and, and when I saw um, Command and Conquer, the first one that required CD-ROM drive and 8 megs of RAM, I was all into my PC. My Amiga 600 was long gone and forgotten. Until 2018. <laughs> all right, guys. So, I love this one, but I have some issues. First one, the case. 
I want a desktop case. Now, through the, throughout this video, I'm gonna call it a cabinet that I mean a case, okay? So let's just open this beauty. No screw. Let's open this one. I'm gonna show you what's inside. What I have been enjoying. All right, let's just start with, with the back side, as you can see here. Can you see the chop? Yes, you can. Power in, power, uh, power in, power up for the monitor. Keyboard, we have mouse. I don't use these parallel serial ports. We got VGA out here and my sound card. And I have found about <laughs> general MIDI in MS-DOS gaming. I didn't know about it back then. And it's just, I, I want to replay all the old games and listen to them in general MIDI mode because it's, it's just incredible. Now this setup. Just take the camera just a bit closer. There we go, guys. All right. So what do we have got in here? We have got a beautiful, super nice motherboard with all Intel chipset. And this motherboard works perfect. It runs perfect. As you can see, it, had, it has got Intel, Intel everywhere, guys. Um, we got the cache memory up at the corner there. We have uh, SD RAM, we have two SD RAM. We have, we can install four uh, either RAM. And as you can see here, I have just installed a eight megabyte compact flash card directly on the ID port there. And that makes it, I mean, I love that compact flash card solution. The fan doesn't make that much noise. We don't have that hard disk, hard disk spinning noise. We, uh, the only thing I can hear actually is the fan for the CPU cooler. So really nice um, upgrade or what's it called today. <laughs> we got a Matrox MGA something, uh, Matrox, uh, I can't read, but it's from 1996 Matrix graphics card, and I don't know how much RAM it's got. I don't see nothing graphics card related of any importance on MS-DOS gaming. It, they, they just work, so yeah. Now, the important part is the sound. The sound card is just, that's just, oh. That's 90% of MS-DOS gaming joy for me today, guys. I love, I love, I love, you know, Sound Blaster, AdLib Sound. I love that. That's what I'm used to, used to use, you know, guys. But now recently I have found out about General MIDI and General MIDI is just, if you haven't experienced it back in the 90s, just like me, then go ahead and do so. I have uh, this. This was actually the first card I bought back in two thousand and eight. This was included in a computer I bought. So this is <clears throat> this is a Sound Blaster A thirty two model CT twenty seven sixty with two RAM blocks over here. I think it's two meg two megabytes of RAM. So you can upload different sound banks in this card and. Yeah, it's another video, but yeah. Other than that, as you can see, this one can 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 play A32 uh, music in Doom and all that. But if you want general MIDI in MS DOS mode, not uh, and in, in Windows 98, it it works uh, with general MIDI, but not in MS DOS mode. It has got some compatibility issues. Uh, Monkey Island works with General MIDI, but not many other games. When I want to play Doom in General MIDI, computers just crash. And I've made some other videos. I have also filmed this Dream Blaster from Sir Darko. Go back and look at my other videos. Now, if you had a wavetable header, you can buy these X1, S1. Now, this one, you can actually upload some different sound banks, but I mean, if you are a MS-DOS gamer, buying one of these Dream Blasters is just a must. Trust me, 
go ahead and buy the now this is x2 and you can buy the s1 that that has got pre-configured pre configured uh, sound banks one uh, and sound bank uh, one sound bank and, and and it's just perfect and i think it costs about 30 euros guys so yeah check that one out go back on my videos just just write retro django dream blaster and you can see a lot of videos where i review and play around and i have some um, <clears throat> some video clips with eye of the boulder 3 where you can hear it with this one do doom with this one june 2 with this one um right right of trials with this one so you can you can hear the music if you go back in my videos so again great so what's my problem why do i want to replace this beautiful beautiful computer what's my issue now the first and most is this hx cabinet every time i turn it on i use this DGK computer PSU that has got 200 watts and AT PSU that is 30 years old. I mean, every time I'm turning it on, I mean, these caps are 30 years old. Every time I turn this one on, I risk destroying this motherboard. It's just <laughs> not the best thing to do. Now, you can buy adapters that so you can install a brand new HEX PSU here and use that adapter and make the cables to HE standard and put it in here and you can and you and you're rid of this high risk I mean if you use these old uh, PSUs buy one of them or if you know what you're doing you can actually also just cut the power cables and you know uh, and give it the plus 12 volt uh, minus 12 volt and all that you you can do it yourself of course also but that's the main issue i really don't like that second one i want a desktop cabinet man <laughs> that's the second one third one i have a youtube channel i like to test different cpus different settings Put in some stuff, take out some stuff, and all that. Now, most of these Circuit 7 cards, they have jumpers. So every time I want to adjust something, I have to, you know, go back to the manual. All the manuals are online, guys. But go back to the manual, find out about multipliers. Uh, 2.9 volts, 3.3 volts. Uh, different speed settings I uh, you you have to I mean if I if it's on 3.3 and the next CPU I put in it requires 2.8 then I, it will get hot or just burn <laughs> so this board I love this board because it has got in the middle here it has got eight or ten switches instead of jumpers now it, it has probably got some other jumpers but every time i do something i can adjust the voltage and all the multipliers and all that with this uh, switch bank in here when i found about that i switched my i used the pension 2 because I, I didn't want to mess around with all that <laughs> i used that for a couple of months then i bought this board and i just fell in love with the socket 7 and this was my current system and as you saw earlier this one runs with a intel pentium 1 uh, mmx 200 megahertz now when this all started the first pc i bought back in 2018 was an ibm desktop that i had reviewed one of my earliest ms dos videos it was a dx2 66 megahertz now as i said i started with a dx4 100 megahertz it took no time i found out about everything under 100 megahertz no history no love no passion not 
interesting for me. I have 286, I have 386. No passion, no interest for me. So I don't use them. I set up my IBM 66 megahertz. I could play Doom 2, but it didn't run fluid, guys. I don't want to fool no one. And, and I, when I wanted to play, you know, games like Duke Nukem 3D, the 66 megahertz was just too slow. And I I don't want to sit and wait. I just want everything to run smooth and perfect. So I bought a 133 megahertz, perfect. And then I found out about MMX and I remembered, oh, there were just so much fuss about the MMX. And I, um, and I got hold of this 200 megahertz MMX. And guys, they're not easy to find. <laughs> not, not for me. I mean, I had to pay a lot of money for them. So I love this, this setup. Also, the old 386, 486 motherboards. <laughs> Some of them I have got. I mean, I want everything on the motherboard. But on my 380, 486... I have a 66 megahertz, I have an 80 megahertz uh, DX2. Listen to me guys, I have to put in an ISA controller card and with that card, I have to put new cables from there to the disk drive, to the hard disk and all that. I don't like that. I, it, that's, that triggers my OCD. I don't like stuff like that. I want you know everything to be compact and built in. So this board with the switching bank there and built-in uh, floppy disk controller, hard disk controller, optical drive controller built in on the motherboard. Love that. The only issue I have got is actually <laughs> on these ATXs are, as you can see here, the connector to the um, keyboard is built in. But as you can see, I have to, I have to, uh, the mouse adapter is, is built like this and every time i put in the mouse this shield you can hear I, I don't like that it's just so fragile it would be nice to have a pension one with you know more stuff built in that's that's what i like as, as you can see i don't like all these cables but they were built like that back then so next issue <laughs> let me tell you next issue guys and, and this is actually something that I have found. I have four or five of these Socket 7 cards. I love them. Everything I have the opportunity to buy them, and I know they they work, then, then I buy them. I love them because I mean, they're 30 years old. Someday they will die, of course. But on all my cards, uh, again, they were jumpers, but this is without the jumper. But all the other cards, they have got... Maybe my OCD guys, I'm so sorry, but they have got voltage regulators down here. Two of them, just around the CPU. And all the other cars I have got has these down here. And I'm telling you, <laughs> this big cooler, passive cooler that's installed up on, on, on top of them, on the side of them, it gets so hot. I mean, I can't put my finger on it, but I can't keep on holding. Then my finger will just burn. And all of my cards, also when they're just on the table, everything is open, they get burning hot. I mean, it's just crazy. And this fan uh, on the CPU, uh, the passive uh, block, the lines are this way, so the air gets pressed in to the CPU and the cold air will be go uh, pushed upwards and downwards, not to the sides, they're, they're, they're closed. So this one is getting a lot, a lot of cold air, but I'm telling you, it gets so hot. It, 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 it still works, but I mean, usage and, and getting hot, that, I mean, when components are getting hot, they're, they just, gets you know you shorten their life they just they just die of hotness <laughs> so because of that i mean this area gets freaking hot <laughs> i have installed a, a, a 80 millimeter fan there with different colored leds rgb leds that you know blows in a lot of cold air but still 
when I close this one down and I after one play a uh, one hour of gameplay you know guy when I um when I um, check out the exiting hot air from here I'm telling you all of my cases they, they get so hot and it it irritates me it just it, maybe my OCD they're, they're, they're built like this I know but I don't like it and I hope you'll respect that I really really don't like it um, yeah that's maybe uh, one of the most irritating things because it just irritates me I mean yeah I actually when it's when it gets too hot uh, I turn them down I have another 166 megahertz I have done the same thing they just they get so hot but again 30 euro electronics so my issues are I want this top case I want ATX, PS, ATX PSU new modern with quality power to these lovely boards I want jumperless solution everything set up by software just like the new modern cards I love that I want something without components getting burning hot and I have found a solution guys check this out Here is the solution to all my problems. Now, before I talk about this one, I just want you to see the model number here. I just love this card I, <laughs> this one this one is just incredible because of this card i mean i took recently i took a picture of this one as you can see it has got atx power connector up here and it has got at here so i took a picture on this one of this one put it out on facebook and i said i have got this motherboard and I'm looking for a retro looking but ATX case you know with ATX style power button and ATX PSU and many people said to me that I didn't know what I was talking about it was just not possible and I said dude it has got ATX connection no not possible you're an idiot okay <laughs> but we're gonna do it guys I got this one I've been reading around and this P5 I don't know if it's P5 i4 or 1 4 but I think it's P5 i 430 TX titanium I B plus no matter where you read about this car everything everyone is just so excited about it they say this is just one of the best from that era now this is a socket 7 motherboard and i actually don't know how many megahertz it it came with i have to be really careful here we have got an mmx cpu guys as you can see up here Let's just pull that out. Socket 7. Now, as I can see, it's a 166 megahertz Intel Pension 1. 166 megahertz, guys, from 95 with MMX technology. I'm gonna take the CPU from my other build, 200 megahertz. Not because I'm gonna feel the difference, you know, guys, but I like the black design of that 200 megahertz. I, again, my OCD, guys, it's just, it's it's not important. If you have a 166 uh, MMX PSU, uh, CPU, just use that one. <laughs> now, let's take, a, let's take a look at this one, guys. Okay, so at top 
we have got SD RAM and this one uh, has got a block here nice it can have one more it's got four um, banks for either RAM it has got again built-in um, ID connector a uh, controller here and floppy disk and here you can connect you know my um, mouse and stuff like that that's all right but to my big surprise on this old system just at the side of the keyboard this controller it says that it can control USB isn't that incredible back in I don't know 95 or something like that 96 97 USB th th this must be the <laughs> you know old generation one of the first generation that controls USB beautiful love that not because I'm gonna use it on, on MS-DOS but if I install Windows 98 then it could then it's a great option guys I love that we have got four PCI sockets I just need one for my graphic card that's perfect but the most important we have three ISA slots here and I need one for my A32 or A64 graphic uh, sound card I love these A64 A32 I love them or you can actually if you wanna if you don't want to spend that much money again you can just buy a something with wavetable header there, there you can have some cheap sound cards today you can sound blaster 16 wavetable header installed to dream blaster s2 and you have got general media name as does i love that stuff okay as i can see here award bios from 1997 oh this is good this is so good now the big question first part we can install of course ATX here and of course it will work I mean no I'm not a pro on this but I have eyes <laughs> so this will work in an ATX case I know it so first issue done we can install new brand new PSU and give it some quality power the second one jumpers can you see any jumpers here There, if I reset this, it will reset BIOS. That's about it. So we have no jumpers. We have no switch switching bank settings. Nothing like that. We don't have a you know barreled Vata all destroying battery. We don't have that. And the most important part, down here, as you can see, we have got these transistors, and they have got no passive cooler on no nothing like that and um, this one when it runs for an hour I have turned it on I have turned it on for about six months ago something like that when I, I, I bought some some different computers and I turned this one on and I remember I, I there were you know cables and all that and I remember I put my fingers on here after one hour of usage and these were cold but back then, I didn't see um, that this one could run with ATX power supply. I, I, I didn't look at it. I didn't think about it. I was just, yeah, I want to play MS-DOS games. You know how it is, guys. But I know th these three, I don't know if they're voltage regulators, what they are. They run cold, dead cold. Up here at the top, we have got, you know, um, cache memory and all that, level 2 cache and all that. Up here, we have got this little transistor it has got a little cooling here a uh, passive cooler and that one gets hot but i mean I, I i can i can hold my fingers on them without burning or nothing but it's 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 there but it's minimal and i can live with that so that's just perfect for me so we have no components that get that get burning hot we got no um you know uh, different jumper settings that's just perfect we got ATX power supply perfect we got a board here that is just this titanium version it's getting so much positive review if you have the time just google this one and 
people are just saying so nice things about this board so i'm just so i feel so lucky that i have got this one and it worked for about six months ago and i it has been in an, in an esd bag so i hope that it still works now some of you guys you're gonna write why don't you have esd gloves and cables and ground and and all that I, i'm just gonna answer now i have been playing around with electronics all my life i have had no issues so i don't rub my feet on carpet and you know build up static electricity i'm pretty i know i discharge myself and yeah this won't kill nothing so no trouble there don't bother writing all that stuff guys so let's just keep on this positive and happy <laughs> video and take the atx uh, desktop case now and i'm gonna present you the case that i'm gonna use with this lovely lovely motherboard and when i when i, when I look at this i'm smiling i'm happy and i really hope through this video in some magic way my happiness goes on to you and you just sit there and watch this and smile with me that would be great guys that would just be perfect so let's just find the case now find the cabinet and then take a look at it this is the next build what do you think about it I know it's not retro, it's too modern, it's maybe from the early 2000s, it's just, it's not retro, it has got Windows XP label at the front, I know guys, but, I mean, bear with me, it's, it looks like new, <laughs> it's bright white, and um, it's an ATX case. ATX power supply will have a beautiful LED here, hard disk loading here, USB we're, go we're not gonna use. I mean, th if this one was off, I would be so happy, but it is there, nothing to do. But it has got a disk drive, floppy disk, I we're gonna use that. We got the CD-ROM drive, I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna, you know, play uh, games like Under a Killing Moon, it was called. Yeah, and some other DOS games that I just love to play back then. So this case, it, it's not clean. I got it like this. Um, it's called X1 here on, on uh, the front. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna re remove this label. Maybe I'm not sure, but let's open this beauty and take a look inside. And um, you know, to all the naysayers, I'm gonna show. Uh, I mean. I will drill new holes, I will make something possible so I can install my beautiful titanium, I, I call it titanium card. When I say titanium is this build we're gonna use this motherboard. I'm gonna install that old board in this ATX case. So let's just go ahead and uh, check off the back side. the inside of this one carefully carefully uh, all right let's just move the camera just a tad here over here i think i have to you know, just turn it backwards here and take it up just a tad so we can look at the motherboard this is just a normal simple um atx build no graphic card it's missing but it has got on board but as you can see it's open here so the graphic card has been pulled out all right no trouble it had some sort of pci connection here also built uh, also taken out uh, yeah it's gone so let's just start by pulling out I, I, again, I'm not gonna use the system. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna take off the motherboard. ATX power supply, guys. <laughs> We're not gonna use this on the old build. Let's just remove them. We. 
something. Okay. For the hard drive, for the optical drive, for the disk drive. And one of the worst things about this one is, as you can see, these connectors that comes, you know, to, uh, from the front of the case. These one that usually they have cables like this, you know, and they say, you know, power switch and power LED reset um, speaker and so on and so on. But this, because of, you know, it's just a tad generic case, then I have to measure everything and I have to do something, something and make this work because I want it to work. Oh, one bad thing, it has got onboard um, speaker here, which means we have to install a speaker because some MS-DOS games, not no games that I have tried, but I know some MS-DOS games, they have, uh, you know, early MS-DOS games, they have um, the built-in speaker, speaker support and Maybe in some of my videos I have to, I, I could, I could uh, play the music from those speakers and that, that speaker, I'm sorry, it's a mono speaker. So we're gonna do something about that. So let's just unscrew this one. Felt like it came loose there. Yes, it did. It has got this little, this little com port. It's a this cable, the motherboard. So that's just removed. And I think carefully, carefully, we can check this board out. Oh, this one is loose. Look at this, this is the, um, <laughs> as you can see, this is the connector, I mean, it sits tight and, it sits tight, but, oh man, oh, and that's the piece, <laughs> that should be over here, all right. So it looks like a you know Pentium 4 system, so yeah, we're not gonna use that. So let's take that one off. We're gonna remove the back plate. I'm not gonna use that one. So on the build, I do hope let's just take the camera a bit back and I'm gonna show you what my plans are. As you can see. I mean, we have got these connectors for the, you know, new modern um, ATX power, uh, ATX mounting holes, brackets and all that for, yeah, newer type of motherboards. And <laughs> that's, the, that, that's the first thing. And the other one is, as you just saw, it had got this, um, what's, what's this called? Bracket on the back side that was here. Um, and I am thinking about installing the new board around, you know, the top should be around here. So we have got the Dean stick for the um, keyboard here. So it should start for around up top here, I think. And I hope that it will end, you know, <laughs> down here. And the other issue is hmm, here they have to be perfect lined with PCI and Isaac cards. So <sighs> I'm gonna do it because I want it to work. So it's just, I don't care what it takes. I mean, we can send people to the moon and still some people said that you can't fit this motherboard in an HX case. Come on guys, if you want it, everything's possible. So this one is a switching power supply, 300 watt, and this is, you know, be, 
at least 15 years old newer guy so i'm just gonna before i plug it in i'm just i'm gonna give it some power and you can actually short the the green one to ground and and, and it will boot up and i'm gonna measure 12 volts plus 12 minus 12 plus 12 minus 5 and you have to measure with volt with uh, a load on so i'm just gonna connect cd-rom drive hard disk and all that and then measure this one if i'm gonna show you everything then this video will be four hours long but you know that i am I'm, I'm gonna measure everything before i give it some power of course because my titanium board is just priceless if you want to buy it for 500 euro i'm gonna say no thanks <laughs> So yeah, it's gonna be open here and it doesn't matter. This will be extra air intake, just like this. So, <laughs> so the case can cool down. I don't care about that. Don't comment about that, guys. It's all right by me. And maybe, maybe I will open here also. You know, air circulation, it's just a good thing. I don't think I will install a fan here. I think this is enough because said earlier my motherboard does not get hot the compact flash card no doesn't get hot um, the graphic card runs dead cold <laughs> the sound card i actually don't know if that one gets hot i have never uh, you know measured or charged any components on that uh, if you have any knowledge about sound cards getting hot let me know so i think i think on this one this uh, built-in fan maybe if it's a noisy one i will replace this but if not if it works i'm just gonna go with this one so let's see how everything comes together when i put the motherboard on here guys i just cleaned the case everything's off and um well this is uh, this is the magical moment now i feel like a surgeon <laughs> Down here, I'm thinking about this is going to be here. This one and this one is going to be here and here, I think. But this amount of space, we have nothing here. So maybe I'm going to drill a hole and make something over here. And I mean, this spacing between these two or when I measure with my fingers, it feels it, it feels like, you know, guys, it feels like <laughs> that the space from here to there is the same as here. And I have, uh, you know, measured with my hands. And you, as you can see, this space between here is the same as this one on this one, which is the same from here to there and there to here. But as I can see, it has got one here and one up there and when i just you know finger measure then it feels like it will hit those components and again this one up top will hit around here around the cache map so i think i think i have to now I, this is just an experiment guys i'm trying what i can just think positive it has to work <laughs> so I think I think I will remove these two now and then try to install the motherboard wow, they were not easy to remove guys I have to break them off <laughs> all right now I learned something new today I like that all right they're off and in my head, this should work. <laughs> yeah, I still feeling like a surgeon. <laughs> All right, so we are as ready to go as I can imagine. Okay, so yeah. So this, just think about it as two new holes that it can get some cold air from. <laughs> nice mud. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of space in this one, in this case, for this little card, but yeah. Okay, to all you naysayers, here goes nothing, guys. We're going to try this. <laughs> I think
think positive. Where are the holes? They're over here. Oh my god. Wait, before I say something, wait. All the holes, all of them, everything. It's a perfect match, guys. It's a perfect match. Oh yes, it works. I hadn't had, I should even not. Drill nothing. What should, what should we call this video? Everything is possible? Yeah, I'm gonna mount it, all the screws and uh, I'll be back. I'm just so happy. Everything just popped into place. I mean, it had the ATX power supply. Then it's just, this is a modern card. It just worked. I didn't have to do nothing. Guys, come on, share the happiness with me. This is just, wait, this is beautiful. This is so nice. I am just, I'm high, man. I have never done drugs, but uh, I feel like I'm on drugs now. <laughs> just drugs of happiness, retro happiness. There we go. No, I haven't tried, what's it called? Ma marijuana or what's it called? All that I haven't tried all that. I like to drink beer and that's about it. Let me see, I have to turn it this way. Oh man, this is just a dream come true. I checked this PSU and the PSU works perfect, guys. There we go. Voltage and all that perfect on this PSU. Look at this. We got <laughs> we got ATX power supply. Now Again, the OCD in me, I want to replace it and I, and, and I will. I mean, they cost peanuts, guys. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna order a new one after this video. And uh, yeah, you know, just to be sure, because this one is still old, guys. I mean, 15 or something like that years old. Now this, this case, it looks like it has almost not been used, guys. <laughs> I think, they, I don't know, maybe a year or something like that. Looks looks like new. So yeah, the board perfect. I didn't uh, I didn't do the mounting up top here because we have all the other screws and they're just they're just beautiful. And I'm happy I remo I removed these two here because uh, if I didn't see that, then I could shorten something inside. It's so beautiful i removed the cables from usb but i think i will connect them you know just for the fun of it now the next big step is actually as you can see we have the agp slot up here <laughs> over here and uh, yeah it had some sound maybe some something something so we're just gonna we're gonna use this one for the graphic card let's see i mean if this is aligned i will be so happy <laughs> oh yes like a glove <laughs> this is just beautiful guys oh i am already in love with this system Now next step will be giving us some power um, and just make sure that, you know, that, that it just boots with this. Oh, oh, we have to find out which one is power on and all that because on ATX, you just push that uh, big power button and it just boots up. It's not like that with this. I mean, if, if you get this power, it won't work. So the motherboard, it has got all these connectors here. And one of them, I will look at the manual, one of them will be power on switch. 
and we're gonna find out which which connectors as you can see i have removed the, the front i have removed the disk drive and all that because i want to you know make a clean video so we can see all the details and uh, look at this this hand has this one has got one of these you know if it had two of them for the plug looks like the atx at plug but it has only one so i don't know what i'm gonna use that for nothing if you know let me know um other than that it's just this is just beautiful now this video is already really really long so my other youtube friends tells me that i should cut off and you know call this part one <sighs> should i do that guys or should i just keep on are you still awake are you still with me are you still here are you still with me here <laughs> just took my compact flash card from the other build that i know is uh, really nice setup now i'm not going to install sound card on this one so when we boot with this card it will show some errors can't find some stuff and all that but it is what it is other than that we're not gonna use a hard drive we're gonna use this little adapter here i love these i love they have got flashing leds and all that beautiful cf to ide 40 pin and we're just gonna find out this is id1 this is id2 so we're just gonna simply install this all right so the motherboard is installed it has got some ram on the sd card i don't know <laughs> i don't know if it works it, it works i have i have got a picture of with this one some time ago so it has got some ram don't know how many megabyte we're gonna use the once 166 megahertz cpu mmx and i'm gonna upgrade it i'm gonna do that in another video guys because uh, we're gonna look at the um, jumperless jumperless adjustments on this card we have installed the compact flash card, low power usage, no noise, and the best part is every time I want to try something new, I just take this card out, plug it to my main PC uh, that's online, download some new games, if I need games, drivers, nothing, I mean something, something. So I don't use this drive, I don't, I don't use that, but the disk drive is a must because when you turn these old machines on and they say seek for disk floppy disks i love that sound that's just magic for me so i'm gonna i'm gonna install the disk drive here i mean retro machines has to have disk drives so yeah so that's okay we're gonna install the 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 built-in fan um, and we have the matrix graphics card installed here guys so well the next that is actually just uh, connect the monitor and give us some power. <laughs> hey, it's gonna be nice. Now, the moment we have all been waiting for. Everything's ready, everything's just set up. And I'm gonna, I have found out um, which pin that says power on, power on switch. So I'm just gonna shorten them, but don't do something like this, guys. Don't do it. First power on. We got a signal. We got a picture. We have Pentium MMX 166 megahertz, and we have 120. Oh damn! We have a lot of RAM. <laughs> yeah, the, we have 256 megabytes of RAM on a MS-DOS machine. Now, this one, uh, it's easy to see, it's clear to see that this uh, motherboard has been used with Windows 98, it must have been, or 95, of course, uh, 256 RAM, uh, 166 MMX, and I mean, you could put a Voodoo 1 card in this and play some 3D games, but what I want to look at is actually this. Oh, wait, let's just. Let's do it like this. Oh, we got some interference. And let's go into. It has found the 
8 gigabyte compact flash card already look at the ram 256 and it says that it's 1997 beautiful speed easy intel pendulum mmx speed easy oh how do we change plus jumper emulation no speed easy 166 can i just that's what I'm talking about. Wait. <laughs> Look at this. No jumpers. No nothing. Oh my god. I am. I'm so happy. Look at this, guys. I can just put it without no jumpers. Just in BIOS. I mean, if you are an MS DOS user, if you use these Pension One systems, then you know why I'm so happy. And. I know you're with me here guys i know it because this is just beautiful 120 133 i have 133 and 120 cpus 150 i don't have that one this is the installed one and from the other pc when i plug in that cpu i'm just gonna do this and you can see here down at the power settings i can it's just set an outro so it will just automatically adjust the voltage and cpu call voltage and the speed i'm i i'm oh my goodness i'm so happy this is just wow man i love this love this oh man oh man oh man on board this drive controller serial port yeah parallel port i mean when I set these computers up, I actually just go ahead and disable as much stuff as I can to free up some IRQ DMA addresses. You know how it is designed. Yeah, 166. Here we can detect hard disks and it just auto detected. Yeah, we're gonna say. I mean, guys, <laughs> this is just, this is beautiful. P5i 430 TX Titanium 1B Plus, the Plus model. Look at all that RAM. I think I will just install uh, just the 16 megabyte. I mean, this is this is crazy in MS DOS mode. I don't. May, maybe it will give me some headache in, in MS DOS with so much memory. I'm not sure, guys. Feel. Dear Phil from Phil's Computer Lab, he has made this startup menu where you can choose, as you can see, conventional extended memory and all that, uh, CD-ROM drive on and off and all that. Look at the Phil's Computer Lab's website. There you can download this setup. Love that guy's YouTube channel. Games. Let's go down to Mr. Duke. Now. No sound, bar, no sound card is installed, so we have to choose none, no music. Yeah, screen is just laser, 800 by 600. <laughs> oh man, oh man, I am just so happy this is just this is beautiful look at this look at the leds one for is for power the green one the red led is for a, a compact flash card has been found or you know and the blinking yellow one is when it reads Jumperless, ATX power supply. Oh, I'm just gonna go ahead and and um, I'm gonna touch this little. Yeah, it's hot, but it's just nothing compared to the other one, guys. It's just nothing. Beautiful bill. Let's put on the front here, so it gets you know. 
that ATX look. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. I, I'm, I'm just so happy. I just have to, uh, you know, uh, get everything in, you know. Uh, this is just... <laughs> this is happiness. <laughs> just a little bit bonus content. Now this computer works with this beautiful, beautiful Intel. 166 MMX CPU that has got some extra instructions and all that. <clears throat> when I was a little kid, I didn't have that much money, so I, I bought the underdog, I bought AMD systems with CPUs like these. I mean, they weren't popular back then. They got hot and me and many of my friends included these we could overclock them but if we didn't they they, they died they burned <laughs> but they were cheap they cost maybe the half price of this mmx system so we uh, we couldn't afford the original intel cpu so i always use these these underdogs gave me so many hours of pleasure with MS-DOS gaming and all that. Also in Windows 9 era, I still, um, and, and when I built, you know, Windows uh, XP era, these AMD XP found up bread. And I bought one Duron 600, that was crap, but <laughs> Thunderbird and Thora Bird, I think they were called. I, I've had all the AMDs I, and I love them. But I always envied having, not, not envied, I wanted to have the original, you know, like the Pentium 3, that's just, I love that CPU, I love the Pentium 3. Um, but, as you can see, we have got an AMD here. I have some different CPUs, guys, and uh, no, nothing for sale. We have got an AMD K6, and this is actually... Okay, this is 266 megahertz. Now, if I install this one, as you can see, as you saw earlier, the BIOS couldn't only detect that I go up to 233. So if I want to use this one, then I probably have to make a, a what's it called, BIOS update. Maybe if it's out there, then I can update it and, and use. Oh, talking about Pinium 3 systems. Um, look at this, guys. Intel Pentium 3, 866 megahertz. Windows 98, the most perfect CPU. <laughs> I love it. But this was just something I always wanted. Dun, 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 dun. Look at this. Tualatin. How many megahertz? I don't know. Let me check it out. 1000. 133 megahertz Intel Pentium 3 Tualatin. Oh my goodness, I love these old on the old AMDs when you installed <laughs> CPU fans. Uh, um, if you just did it mounted the right way and you just chipped off just a tad of the corner, then you destroyed them. I hate, I hate that AMD system. Uh, it's so beautiful with this. Yeah, that's another talk, guys. So let's just try to install this just for the fun of it. Let's try to install this um, AMD K6 200 megahertz uh, CPU and see if the computer detects it, how it, it should detect it, it should work. And I shouldn't bother uh, adjusting, as you can see, voltage and all that. This is 2.9, I think this one was also, but it should work guys so this is the first thing i want to try and the next thing is i actually am going to install this card now i have no idea if it works or not haven't tried it this was actually a donation i made i made a video where i checked one of these dream blaster um, wave table uh, general midi and uh, yeah after this uh, I got a lot of positive response and one of the guys said hey dude I have I have a sound card that I don't use to want it and as you can see here 
It was actually local here in Denmark. It says Creature of Labs, Sound Blaster 16, C16F. Nice, and it's called no, model number CT2940. 2940, and it's from 1995. Oh, it's a new one, guys. Creative. Made in France. Nice. And the good part is I'm going to use this only because it has got the wavetable header. I'm not going to check the A32 from the other computer. So these beautiful, beautiful Dream Blasters, I mean, go ahead and buy one, guys. They're just, I love them. They're just so easy to install, as you can see here. There we go. It hits nothing. It sits perfect. I love them. Now we should be ready for some general MIDI emulation, guys. Let me see. Joystick, speaker out, line out. So we're just going to use this port. All right, let's install this beauty. Let's install the CPU and see what's going to happen. The AMD CPU has been installed. Let's give it some power and see if the CPU works. I have absolute, oh. AMD K6, 175. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna enter BIOS and um, I'm just gonna see. I, I I pressed Escape. I wanna see if it says something. Yeah, I I reset it because I I didn't have no, I didn't want to have no trouble. Let's just enter. Oh, I didn't have to reset. I just I'm just gonna enter BIOS and. Um, I shouldn't even reset the bias because it should just detect. Okay, so we should go down here and down here. Say auto. Yeah, 2.9 as I read. And say 200, no jumper settings. Let's just detect. Yeah, yeah, detect. There we go. And say save and exit. Yep. Now we just say 200 megahertz. AMD K6 200 megahertz CPU found. A new CPU installed. Press delete. What? I just did that? Let's do it again. <laughs> or, or press another key to continue. But uh, yeah. Don't know why it did something like that. It's maybe because I reset it to BIOS. But what? Now we should boot. I'm just just gonna let it uh, count the RAM because I want to but uh, I want it just to boot up. I don't think it will say new CPU detected now. Ah, nice. We got a 200 megahertz CPU installed, guys. Beautiful. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna pull off that AMD and install the Intel system and then put in this beautiful sound card, guys. This, this is just this is a must have. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> now, before I install this front here, I will I will just find out which of these are for power on push button. Come on. Oh, man. <laughs> because, um, it's just a PBC side. I don't know which one is what, guys. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take this one. And can you see what's going on? Yes, you can. I'm gonna put this down here, and I'm gonna put the other end here. And I'm gonna, yeah. 
No, so it's definitely not this one. So let's try this brown and black one. And push the button. Oh yes, as you can see. So this one is power on. Uh, Guys, I'm ready for this. I don't know why, but <laughs> um, this LED is on. Just, you know, not both, not full bright, but it is on. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. But check this out. ATX. Now the LED light is really bright. This guys, it just boots up. It it's so nice. We have got ATX cap power on, LEDs on, and then um, I haven't set BIOS up. And um, the drivers for the sound card is for the A A32. So I don't, I don't think the sound will work. But I just want to show that. Look at this. It blinks, it works, isn't it just beautiful? It works, guys. I'm just gonna put the camera the proper way. My camera has got hard time filming the CRT monitor, but just to, you know, round up this video, I, I want to have this monitor on and then um, let's just take Doom out here. Beautiful. Not on the camera, I know, but the real deal, guys, it looks. Oh, we have sound effects. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, man. So. The music will work when I set the rest of it off, off on, but. This video has got a marble, guys, and it, it is, um, you know, if you really want to do something, never listen to the naysayers, don't listen to negativity, everything is possible. If you want to do something, just go ahead and do it, do whatever makes you happy, because I just wanted this setup, and now I got it. Real nice CRT monitor super nice uh, desktop case I know it, it doesn't look retro I know but I don't know um, it feels more and more like retro to me don't know I, I can't I can't really explain it it looks like retro but just clean not yellowed ugly color retro if you know what I mean <laughs> so I want to say Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this long, long MS-DOS MS -DOS video. This is my dream build. This is my dream machine. I love this. Um, I wish it was just a tad smaller. Um, and I know myself, if I find another case that has, you know, the real retro look, then I will probably buy that and convert it in some way to run with a new ATX power supply because as you can see this old board runs perfect with ATX turn on and off with this ATX button it's just it's just beautiful so I like this but it's not it's not the ultimate dream that I want to keep my ultimate is the real deal the old case uh, a tad smaller and I have another problem with it actually that is it's just uh, I don't have I don't have room for my keyboard so yeah it is what it is guys but uh, as of right now I'm, I'm so happy with this build and I'm so happy you uh, you watch this movie uh, video <laughs> to the end so I want to say thank you for watching guys I, I, I really appreciate it thank you for your time if you like this I hope you will give it a thumbs up if not then you're welcome to give it a thumbs down it's, course it's up to you but I'm just so happy I'm gonna play my own games 
I'm gonna set up, you know, some blaster. My dream blaster is uh, X2, and oh, this is going to be an awesome, awesome day, guys. So, uh, yeah, until next time, check out some other videos. And if you like retro stuff like this, then I hope I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day, guys. Bye.